where we encourage and support Christian indie authors on their journey to publication. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction. Well, welcome to our new format. We have changed our provider for the live streaming service. And so there may be a bit of a delay or hopefully not too big of a snafu over on YouTube. We were checking before we went live and it appeared that the YouTube was not going to be able to stream it live for us. But if you uh, watch us via Facebook, you should be able to put a comment in as we go along. Um, share a link to your sprint if you did the writing sprint today and just engage with us in general. So do that via Facebook and we can see how this new format is going to work out for us. Also, if you like what we're doing, remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget that starting August 9th, so this is next week, we will be changing our broadcast day to Friday. So we will not be live streaming on August 8th. We'll be starting to do Friday, so our live stream will be on August 9th. All right, so thanks for joining us, everyone, again. And we always start our episodes with a segment we call What's Up? We check in with each other about how our personal lives are going. So, Rhonda, what's up with you? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, we are in Roger City again this weekend, and... Um, this weekend is the big, huge nautical festival where thousands and thousands of people come to our, this little tiny town that usually only less than 2,000 people live in. So it's going to get really busy here really quick. And um, so at home, I am just trying to get back into writing mode after, um, you know, my grandmother passed this month and we worked hours and hours and hours every day trying to get her house cleaned out, ready to put it for sale. And so this weekend has been a nice break. But I'm excited to get back into writing this weekend. So that's awesome. it for me. Yeah, um, it's been really good to have you back in the office hours, too. Uh, you're always so encouraging um, <laughs> to share with. And to, it's really neat to hear your uh, daily word sprints. So that's really great. It's good to have you back. And again, we're all praying for your Thank family. You. Um, what's you. up with you this week, Tina? Well, just got back from uh, eight days of camping at our um church denominations campground for camp meeting and the last four of those days i had my two-year-old granddaughter with me um and can i just say i am too old <laughs> <It's a> <laughs> just, i'm exhausted um she just doesn't stop and she figured out she could run faster than me uh -oh. so if she didn't want to do something that i was telling her she would just run away um, and the campground was not a good place for that to be happening. So we had a few words, uh, and eventually she got, came to understand that that was not a good idea. But uh, it all worked out. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. So. Uh, what a wonderful memory that you made. And um, I'm sure that the camp was successful for your teenage son as well, right? Oh, yeah. He, he was running around with this gang of teenage boys. Christian teenage boys, they're all good, God-fearing kids. They they were not getting into too many shenanigans, although they were going to make this video for a talent show they have on a Friday night and came up to me and asked me if it would be okay if they videotaped themselves stealing my golf cart. <laughs> and I had to bring it on their parade because I said, well, do any of you have a driver's license? And nobody did. And I said, well, then you cannot steal my golf cart well all that means so is watch out for next year. Yeah. yeah <laughs> next year they may forget to ask permission no just kidding i'm sure they wouldn't but it's really uh, nice when you have um like-minded families to uh engage in fellowship with your children that's really a blessing to have those relationships awesome yes awesome all right jen what's up with you this week besides the tech nightmare of figuring out a new format thank you for all your hard work Oh, um, what is uh, new? All right. Well, um, I just have to say that Tina's granddaughter is adorable because I spent a lot of time <laughs> with her this weekend, too. Um, so I, the, the WhatsApp I want to share happened actually this morning. I got a Facebook message from someone 
who had just finished avoiding Esther and she wanted to let me know that, um, that she loved it, but that she um, could really relate to John and that Mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard. And so, um, you know, God gives me these stories and I forget sometimes as I'm writing and in publishing and promoting, I forget that how, um, how sometimes the characters in the story will resonate with people, you know, and I know a little bit about this woman's story and the, the fact that like, you know, for those of you who haven't read, John does have, um, an abusive past and, um, for her, this woman to have been able to read my book and it had resonated with her, um, just means a lot because I hope that as she reads it, that she doesn't only see the abuse, but that she sees the redemption and, and how God can, um, is there in the middle of that too. And how it's in the middle of her life too. So, um, just totally humbled today because it's, it's, it's not me at all. It's totally God. And I appreciate that he's um, able to use me as a vessel for him. So that's my what's up today. Oh, that's really wonderful. That's really um, important to think about. Um, I sometimes thank God that I did not turn to writing when I was still uh, frolicking among the worldliness. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it. But who knows what kind of damaging um, career track record would be following me around. And so, yeah, it's really a blessing to use your gift to minister to people. And that's, that's so nice. Thank you for sharing that with us because, you know, Christian is the first word in our podcast and it is all um, about Christ. Awesome. Okay. So, um, oh, good morning, Maria. So um, Maria has found us. That's awesome. I'm hoping that it isn't too tricky for you all to uh, find us on the Facebook chat. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Maria's uh, snow boy or boy. I can't read what that says. Wow. Is that like her cover for her book? Yes, it's really it is. cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. Awesome. How neat. Okay. Sorry. I'm all distracted by the new <clears throat> app going on here. Um, let's transition into our topic, which is building your platform. Now we talked a little bit about last week when we're talking about a platform, we're talking about your author platform, how you present yourself and your work to the world, how you find customers for your book. That's your author platform. And today we're going to dive into Facebook as a part of your author platform. Now we have several points to discuss and we have so much to say about this that we may have to break it into two episodes just depending on how uh, Father Time treats us. So um, why don't we talk first of all of all about the different types of presence you can have on Facebook. Um, if you're streaming, watching our live stream now, you probably already have a personal profile, right? Like Tina, uh, why don't you talk to what a personal profile is on Facebook? Well, that would be the one that you first signed up with when you came onto Facebook, and it's um, for your family and your friends and playing games or, you know, whatever you do regularly on Facebook, um, as opposed to a page or a group that you would um, set up that would be connected to your personal profile, but that would be also separate. All right. So you just said (coughs) an author page and an author group. So we're going to we're going to park here for a minute and discuss the differences. Who wants to talk a little bit about what an author page <coughs> is supposed to be? Um, I can. An author page is um, the same thing as if you own any other kind of business. You would have a page and it's basically kind of your business card. It's um, your presence as a professional on Facebook where an author group is attached to your author page, but it is more of a private thing where um, it is people join the group where people like your page and will get some updates from you, but people join your group because they want to get, be more on the inside of what's happening as uh, in the author world for you. 
So that's interesting. If you think about back in the old days, if you're my age or thereabouts older, a little or younger, you might remember like the yellow pages. And if you think about your author page as your listing in the yellow pages, it will have your contact information. If you were, you know, Bob's Bait Shop, it would have your hours that you're open and, um, you know, things like that. And then people could reach out to you to ask you a question like, do you sell earthworms or something? Um, whereas a group is more for making connections. Wouldn't you say that that's correct, Rhonda? Yes. All right. I and, agree and, you can, <laughs> and then you can have discussion <laughs> in a group where you could not have one on your page. What other limitations does a page have that a group does not, Jennifer? So let's say, like, I know in your author group, you can do live streaming. Is that possible from an author page? Um, you can do live streaming from an author page. You can do live streaming on your profile, on your author page, or on um, your group. So that is good for all three of them. Can we back up just a minute? Because sure. Because I've had discussions with you before, and I've seen authors um, before that have... Um, they are profile, their, their regular Facebook profile, they make it an author page. And I want to I'll talk about why you shouldn't do that. There's reasons why you need to have a personal profile page, even if you don't ever care about connecting with Fred Smith, who sat next to you in high school or anything like that. Um, because we have, um, you have different things that you can do with it. You need it. Because, first of all, you can't do anything else. You can't do an author page and you can't do author groups unless you have a personal profile to begin with. Also, um, you cannot connect with people you already know if you don't have the personal profile and um, you, for you to join other groups. So this is the most important thing, I think, that there are lots of writing groups out there in Facebook that you can connect with Christian writing groups. There's also groups of for hobbies that might have something to do with your author. Like if you are like, like Rhonda, I, I'm going to guess Rhonda, that you're in some genealogy groups on yes, Facebook. That is accurate. So that would be a great place that you can also kind of connect with people that might want to buy your book later on down the road. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have lost Jamie somehow and we're going to have to continue on with her. Jamie, if you want to message me and we'll try to figure out where you are, maybe something with her computer. Um, so unfortunately, you guys are going to be hearing a lot from me if um, if Jamie's not here because she's supposed to be hosting. But OK, so that's Facebook, a personal profile. Have you guys ever seen someone do that? Like they take their personal profile and make it their author page instead? Yes. Yeah, and I can see how that could be problematic. I mean, there's some author groups that you join where you're not allowed to self-promote and be having your personal page be your author page would be self-promotion in itself um and also like i'm a member of a bunch of rabbit groups because i own a, a house rabbit they're called where they live in the house um and i wouldn't want my author page to be what i join those groups with right uh, so that agreed. would be agreed okay also it doesn't do the same stuff that a page does. There are things that you, that you can only do by having a page. So these are the words we have to like, if, especially if you're very new to Facebook. And for some people watching this, this might be too simplistic, but I need to remind a lot of our listeners that we have some listeners that are just starting out and have no idea about any of this stuff. So this is one of our more, maybe one of our more basics, but maybe not. So you have your profile, which is your, your original page that you sign up with. A page is your business, so you as an author, and then the group. We're going to talk about groups next time. So let, can we move on to, to pages? So why do you think that you need an author page? Well, I would say... Well, you want someone, you want ahead, someone to find you, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I should just let everybody know, I know nothing about this topic. I haven't studied it, so I'll be asking a lot of questions. Um, so... I assume that you would have that just so that there's somewhere for people to find you. Yep. What about right, I, I believe that it it works similar to a business card, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also somebody that reads my book is not going to go on Facebook looking for Tina Katain because they're not going to know that that's my nickname and that's what I go by on Facebook. They're going to look for my mm -hmm. author name, which is Christina Katain, and then they're going to find my page. I don't necessarily want people reading my book to find my personal page. 
um, because there's things on there that are personal. Right. Um, so I would I, I want to direct them to my author page. I think it's a really good point you just brought up, Tina. Something that I've done since I have started, before I started publishing, when I got close to time, I went in and changed my personal profile settings to, to private because I've started getting friend requests from people that I don't know. They might know me or they might know me through a friend, but they really only, I believe only know me because they've seen my books are published. And I don't think if I don't know you, you don't need to see pictures of my little girl swimming at the beach. You know, I, and so the problem with that is that my church who I love, they love to tag my girls in all kinds of pictures and I'm okay with that. They do that, but only people who are my friends get to see the pictures or see that my girls are tagged in that. So, um, so you might want to consider that before, um, when you're publishing, but that's a personal choice. Some people don't care. Some people don't put anything privately up there that, um, that would be seen. Maria Johnson says Facebook page has been really helpful for my marketing recently since setting up when I went public with my pen name a couple months ago. All right. So that's a good point. So let's move on to, so we know we kind of talked about what profiles are. A couple of the other things that reasons why you need a pro uh, um, a page. Sorry, we're on the page. The reasons why you need a page are you, for advertising and to do groups. You cannot have a group unless you have a page first, a group, a professional group, that, like for your author page and uh, for advertising. So we're not going to be talking about advertising today. That might be a topic we get to later, but not today. So that's a really good point. That's been really helpful for you, Maria. I'm glad that that, that has helped you. Okay. Um, okay. The other thing too, sorry, social proof. I have found that there are a lot of people out there that are, you know, pu are publishing their books that may not be legit. Some people know about the problems with Kindle Unlimited and people, what they call book stuffing. So they'll make up a fake name um, for an author and then they, they copy and paste a bunch of stuff from other authors and then people go in and read it and they just get money for the page reads. Before I buy a book, I usually check to make sure that they're a real author. And your Facebook page is one way of doing that. If you're if you have a presence there and you're posting on there, people see that you're a real person. So again, it kind of goes back to the business card thing. So, all right, ladies, what are some things now? All right, maybe you guys should be asking me these questions, but there are things to do on your Facebook page if you're pre-published and if you're published. But I know at me as a starting off pre-published author, it was kind of intimidating because what do I post on this page? We know that we need to build a platform. We need to have a, a little bit of a following before we ever publish. But do you guys agree that we need to have some things on that? Like we need to be able to put things on this page before we're published? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to build some sort of community, I would think, just to get people to know you. You guys follow other authors, right? Have you seen some of the things that they do on their pages? Yeah. Well, I follow... Um, well, Beverly Cleary mm -hmm. is one author that I follow, and uh, she's got, it's very active. So I don't know if she would be posting the same things that we would be posting, trying to get people to be interested in us. Right. All right. So well, there's I have one. A, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, on my on my um, author page, Christina Katane, I, I don't know if it's his author or not, but I post a lot since my book is set in Alaska. And I'm assuming that um, anyone wanting to read my book would probably be interested in Alaska. I post a lot of pictures of Alaska on there. I post um, information, like little articles that I find that are relevant to things that happen in my book. For example, Part of my in part of my story, the my main character goes to fish camp, um, and they are fishing for hooligan. Now we all thought that hooligans were youths that were running around causing trouble, but they're actually a kind of fish in Alaska that you and they're very oily, and so they would use them not only to eat but for oil for their lamps. So they, she goes to the hooligan run to go hooligan fishing. And I found a video online of a little boy who was actually hooligan fishing. And they posted a video on YouTube. So I posted that to my author page and then explained that these are the hooligan that are going to 
be prominent in part of my story. So that's just some of the things that I've posted on my author page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a reader, let me tell you, they are interesting. And the pictures are beautiful and they do kind of give you a sense of what you're reading right. a little bit. Now, would you have a separate page for each book that you publish? No. All right. First of all, um, if you publish for a few years, even you're going to have several books out and then you're going to have several pages to maintain. You want to keep your fan base in one spot because when I come out with my next book, I don't want to have to build a fan base on that page for the mm -hmm. new book. Now you may want to have different pages if you have different pen names for different genres. Um, but for me, no one page it's already built. So I still have people there waiting for the next book. So um, some of the things I did before I was published is, and I still continue to do, is I share, uh, I would share scripture graphics. Like I would go on to Canva, um, which is a free service. They have a paid version, but you can use it for free. Pick Monkey, um, even you version. If you have that on your phone, the, the Bible app on your phone, you can make with that app, whatever the scripture of the day is or any scripture you choose, but they have automatic images that you can share. So hmm. doing stuff like that, just to share, just gives you something on there and keeps you active. Um, I also would like to share books that I like because if people are following you, chances are they like your genre. So, and chances are you read in your genre. So people are always interested in knowing what books an author is reading as well and who they enjoy as well. And mm -hmm. um, like, like Tina, I share research too. So, so if you are pre-published, don't think that it's too soon to start your page. Some pre-published mm -hmm. authors have blogs and that's a perfect place to share um, the links to your blog posts that would probably cover things like your writing process and your research and like that. So I did run contests too, before I was published. Like I gave away other books, other authors in my genre, just to try to continue to build up um, excitement on my page. Um, but I found that a lot more difficult before I was published, but it's not impossible. Okay. Now I know that you have a blog too, but it seems like you're more active on Facebook. Do you just get more response from Facebook or you just enjoy doing it more? I do not have a blog. Um, oh, back in the day, just a website, just a website. I, I mean, oh, okay. there's a place I could put a blog on the website okay. there, but it's just not published. But um, yeah, I don't want to have to maintain that. <laughs> Okay. Honestly, some okay. people enjoy that. I just, I, mm -hmm. I did years ago, I did a, a blog called not quite mom of the year .com, And I mm -hmm. liked it for a while. I really enjoyed it for a while, but I ran out of things because it was real life, not fiction, like fiction. I can mm -hmm. just keep writing and writing, and writing plus fiction is what I always want to do anyway. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, so I, I don't blog, but right. anybody who does, this is a, your page is a perfect place to start sharing that stuff. So you don't have mm -hmm. to, really do twice as much work if you're working on your blog just share that onto your page share a few scripture mm -hmm. graphics and, and pop and share other things you find occasionally and and go that route and if, now tina if you, you do want, have a blog uh yeah i haven't bllogged in a long time so it's kind of a just sitting there but it's there, hard and, okay. really hard on your books isn't it you when you're constantly writing your is, novels it's hard to switch the blog mm-hmm so this this WordPress site that I had that I started like before I got serious about writing my book, I was posting um, a more spiritual stuff on. So the the website is like split between Bible study, the Bible study that I was putting on there, and the spiritual content, and my writing stuff, and so it was getting really hard to maintain that way. Um, so then I started a new website for. Um, Christina .com is just my author website and I've kind of let the blog one go by the mm -hmm. wayside um, it's still yeah. there but I just haven't posted okay. anything in a long time but if anybody feels like they want to start a blog um, but they just don't know you know what am I going to write about there are, you can google it you can google um, blog ideas for authors and there's a ton of ideas out there um, if you, if you think you can maintain it, I mean, I just couldn't, I couldn't maintain it. I, I yeah. stink at follow through and I knew that about myself. And so I just kind of let it go. So both of you agree then that Facebook is easier to maintain than a blog. 
It is for me because um, I have to go on there anyway for other reasons. So I'm able to just kind of jump on there and <clears throat> find things that I can find because, again, going back to having a profile, I'm in different groups and I like different things that um, are relevant to my authorship and, and to the genre that I write in. And I'm able to share those things, too. Joanne says, I find maintaining a blog quite hard, keeping up with new content, etc. So it's just sitting there, too. I kind of figured we weren't the only writers out there that were struggling with that. So I think that's really common. Yeah. Yeah. So, OK, so. Now, now, since publishing, um, I still do all those other things that I mentioned, but if you are a published author, some of the things you can do, um, cover reveals, obviously, your book release te teasers, book promotion, um, videos. So my, re my live release party is always done on my page and then shared to my group, and here's why. On the page, it's available for everyone to see, but I get more interaction with my group. But any interaction from the group shows up on the page as well. So, um, but so that's why you need a page so that the rest of the world can see it. Because when I go live, all of my friends see that I'm live, even if they don't like my page. So that helps bring more traffic into my page as well. Um, but whatever you do, so yes, promote yourself. Um, Yes, do uh, book releases and do your book trailers and all that kind of stuff. But I think that what's really important that this with every other social media that we're going to talk about in building your platform is you try to follow the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is um, that 80% of what you post is not promotion. Only 20% is promotion so that people don't get sick of it. Have you guys ever had someone follow you on Twitter or you follow them back and everything they post is the same book over and over? That's all they do. They don't like Every anyone 50 else. 50 seconds. Up. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, like, okay, unfriend. You want, you want to give people a reason to be there. And if they've either already bought your book, still thinking about it, or aren't planning on buying your book at all, you don't want them to tune out of your Facebook page because that's all you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. When it's release week, it's usually for me more 50-50, sometimes a little more like 60, you know, like... I, there'll be a little bit more promotion. But after that week, it, it, I try to fade it off to where I'm still posting scriptures. I'm still posting about my research and I'm posting, I even post things like about what's going on in my life. You know, like um, when my, a couple of years ago, my kid dropped her ice cream cone and it was just so sad. It was one of those moments just like, oh, and I took a picture mm -hmm. of it and posted it. Like, so just things like that, because people want to know that you're a real person. So, mm -hmm. so um, I know this is probably ancient um news but facebook i thought that you could only have one page per person oh no so is it you can have as many business profiles i unfortunately am an admin on many many pages only a couple mm -hmm. of which i really um mm -hmm. interact with but because i have friends or i'm in churches or organizations that need mm -hmm. people that are like tech savvy just be able to jump in and fix mm -hmm. things um, yep. So I get notifications, a lot. but um, yeah, I've got my, um, my author page. Um, I help mm -hmm. a friend who is a stylist. I'm, uh, well, I, I administrate other pages too, but I mean, just with your name on it, isn't there only supposed to be one Jennifer Tong? I've not seen anything. Like okay. That. No. Okay. Me neither. But well, like I said, that that was a long time ago, so obviously things changed. So that's good. But I'm not trying to having another Jennifer Carlton page, so or another page with. Oh. So I don't know, but I don't think that that is an issue. So, okay. okay so that's why you should have a page. Let's transition into um, groups. Before we transition, it is, um, it's 1030. <clears throat> and I don't know if we're going to be able to get Jamie back or not. Are we? She's still trying to get on here. Or? She is still trying to get on here. So what are you suggesting, Tina? I don't know. I was just, I'm just I'm reminding you of the time because I know you're trying to. Um, kind of well, take I, over yeah, as I, yeah as I saw a, the time I just okay. all right but obviously you, obviously you think we should probably not not transition into the next topic so um I guess we could go into the feeding of the backs and we'll focus on groups next episode that sounds like a good idea to me yeah um although it might not take as long with the feeding of the backs if we can't get Jamie back which is really That's sad unless Jamie will send us her 
right. Hey, do you want to bust and read it? That's a great idea. That's what I was thinking is that we had a little extra time because we only had three of us. But okay. So this is a, feeding in the backs. This is our time when we normally would share um, our what we did in our sprint. And this is how it works. This is raw, unedited writing that we did normally right before the podcast starts. But because of all our tech things, we did it last night. Um, so we've all been itching to share. Um, our, we, I tweeted out the words earlier today. And um, Tina, why don't you go first and share with us the words? Okay, I'm still trying to get my page open. So maybe someone else should go first. My, right, my I, computer goes okay. really slow when Be Live is open for some reason. Okay, what about you, Rhonda? Are you ready to rock? Sure. All right, you want to give us the yep. words and then read yours? Sure. The words, thanks to Tina, were check, variable, restaurant, resort, and lamb. <clears throat> okay. Check, please, check. Mary loudly clamored for my attention in her best British accent. Where do you think you are? I asked her, slapping her shoulder with my tablet. Wake up. This isn't a posh resort, you know. We're in Landon. I sank down on the counter next to her, chin in hand. We sighed in unison, both thinking back to the short vacation I won in that radio contest last winter. When are we going back? I could use another dose of that yummy mint lamb roast, she said, rubbing her belly. This is a restaurant, you know, I reminded her. I pointed my thumb over my shoulder. Rosie's willing to try most anything. She's always up for a suggestion, and it is almost spring. Hmm, maybe. I don't know if it would taste the same without Fabio serving it to us on that big platter of his. Mary giggled and picked up her phone. She swiped a few times and showed me a photo of the waiter on our cruise. I remember, I said, hoping I'd turn quickly enough to hide my blushing cheeks. I remember the moment that photo was taken and the emotions I felt at that moment we were trying to rush back in the we're trying to rush back in a flood I'd rather not wade through at the moment. I untied my apron and held the wadded ball of fabric to my face just long enough to make sure my face wouldn't betray me. Rosie, I called to the back room. The end. Hey. Okay, so you ended that right when I'm like wanting more. So <laughs> good. Yeah, good. Me good. too. That's my I way. Know. Know. <laughs> did you get all the words in i did get all the words in and uh yeah the last sentence was after <laughs> i saw you telling it those time but... oh, i know my mic went out last night for some reason yeah a few glitches with this new system we're not sure if we're sticking with it or not but um oh and i'm missing the i'm missing the chat here let's see um okay um Okay, I'll have to answer some of your questions afterwards, Maria. Sorry. Okay, um, Christina, how about you? You want to read yours? Okay. So uh, this is a continuation of another sprint that I think we actually, actually did it earlier that day. And we were just doing our personal sprints. Um, oh, okay. And a character who was a, a anti-terrorist or, um, I don't know, part of a leader of a task force so here we go can i have the check please ian asked the waiter as he rushed by a tray held above his head the man nodded it around the table reminding ian of a play he'd seen with singing waiters his crisp black pants were creased perfectly and his bright white button-down shirt was wrinkle free even his bow tie was perfectly straight how he how he managed to work a whole shift and still look so pristine boggled the mind this wasn't normally the type of restaurant Ian frequently frequented. He preferred to eat at his local on the corner near his flat. The dog and pony pub was more to his liking. A good mutton stew and a pint were just the kind of thing he liked. This fancy leg of lamb cuisine with mint sauce and wine that demanded to be swirled and sniffed before one could drink it. Well, it took a lot for him to resort to such fineries. He had saved the queen today. Did that make him God? Obviously not, because if he were God, the secretary of the Queen's security forces would have invited him to the dog and pony for this celebratory dinner. Terrorists weren't all that smart or creative, and their techniques were not that variable. It hadn't actually been that hard to find them. Not only that, it was the hard work of his team that deserved most of the credit. The secretary was introducing him to someone a member of parliament whose name he would never remember when the cell phone in Ian's pocket began to ring. It was the one used exclusively for work and he knew it wouldn't be ringing on tonight of all nights unless it was urgent. 
I apologize, sir. I must get this, Ian said. Of course, replied Secretary XXX, whose name I don't know. <laughs> Ian hurried into the foyer where the noise level was quieter and answered the call. I need you back here now, DCI Fitzpatrick. We have a situation that requires your attention, said his commander. What is it, sir? Ian asked, already on his way to the car park, not bothering to say goodbye to the secretary. The prime minister's daughter has been kidnapped, said the commander, unable to hide the panic in his voice. I'll be right there. But Ian tucked the phone into his pocket and ran the west rest of the way to his car. At least this time, the call hadn't come in the middle of a first date or a romantic moment. But this kind of thing was exactly the reason he'd remained a bachelor well into his 40s. His thoughts immediately turned to Violet. She had been a bright spot in his life for a short while. Her blue eyes haunted his dreams and he could smell, still smell the sick scent of lavender in her auburn hair. And then the timer went off. Wow. <laughs> How many words is that? Oh, uh, I don't know. Let me see. Tools. Word count. 480. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. That was a lot of stuff. Yeah, I was obvious I, that I did not know the title of the guy he was supposed to be having dinner with. <laughs> <laughs> Maria says, LOL, loving the Britishness, Tina. And then she's and then she said, um, it would be a mobile phone if you're keeping with British terms. Oh, yeah, we, I knew that. We, ha we have Maria here to uh, keep to keep us legit when we write uh, mm -hmm. about British characters. Thanks, Maria. I, I watch almost exclusively um Acorn TV, which is all British, and I watch almost exclusively crime dramas. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and I have a little surprise for everybody. One second here. Oh, yay! Oh, we missed you, Jamie. Can you hear us? Hold up. I couldn't hear you guys. Oh, she, doesn't she look like she's in a plane? Is she going somewhere? Yeah, she does. I'm totally jealous. No wonder she's she flying actually. off to. Yes. Um, so, here yeah, I'm back. Hooray. Uh, so, uh, did I get back in time for feedback? You've missed. Yeah. Yes. You missed. Right. Well, I have to pull up my document, uh, okay. which is like a whole nother thing. So, so okay. um, is the discussion basically over? Like, is that where we're at? Is the feedback or what's up with that? What's up with everything? Yes. We you've already missed Tina and Rhonda's um, pieces. So it's. Oh, no, that's a bummer. Yeah. It's time for you and me to share. All right. Um, so did you go? You didn't go yet? I did not go yet. Would All you right. Like can you go while I'm looking for mine then? Sure. Okay. Mine's different than your <laughs> the rest of you. <laughs> no restaurant? No, 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 there's a restaurant. Lamb. I don't like lamb. It's greasy and tough and smells like sweaty jock straps. Not that I go around <laughs> sniffing athletic supports, mind you, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. lamb meat is gross. I'll never forget the first time I had to eat this stuff. I was in college and my friends had the crazy idea of trying out the new Ethiopian restaurant on the, the other side of Boston. I went along the entire time thinking that it was some gigantic prank. I mean, I had sat through all three hours of the We Are the World fundraiser on TV the previous summer. I knew the I knew that Ethiopians don't have any food to eat, let alone enough food to feed a restaurant full of hungry college students. I figured we'd just end up at some lame diner or another. All of them were just one variable of the next. Greasy food, free coffee refills. So you can imagine my surprise when the cab did, in fact, pull up outside of a restaurant called Addis Ethiopian restaurant. You can also imagine my surprise when we walked in and discovered there were no chairs. All around us, people were seated on pillows around oversized coffee tables. So maybe we are the world should have raised money for furniture for these poor people. <laughs> the shot continued when our meal arrived. Various dishes were placed on the Lazy Susan in the middle of our coffee table. A plate of Ethiopian flatbread settled in the center. I had never had Ethiopian flatbread, something our waiter kept calling injera or injera or something like that but the closest description i could come to would be flattened sour english crumpets it was squishy and tasted like it it was a couple of weeks past its expiration date it was then that i realized that there was no silverware this restaurant expected us to use this sour spongy flat stuff to scoop up the stews in the bowl at our table no to self start a music aid campaign to buy silverware for these suffering souls and the stews, lamb. Every last dish had lamb meat. What do these people have against chickens? Would a little bit of cow meat been too much to ask? Three, two, one. 
<laughs> I was gonna offend people, like because, like I started writing this, and this is kind of autobiographical, except for I'm not a jerk. <laughs> this person like was really coming off as a jerk, um, but I that was the first time I ever had lamb meat, and that is kind of what I think of their flatbread. Like it's kind of tastes sour, like but not in a disgusting way, like this person put it. But I really like the alliteration silverware for these suffering souls. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're probably yeah. lucky there was no goat. There might have been. And honestly, I don't remember if every dish had lamb, but I remember that it had lamb and I was I didn't like the taste of it. And I've not had lamb since. And it probably was the seasonings and everything. It probably wasn't even the lamb meat. But I I, I, hate, I disliked it so much and I didn't feel well afterwards that I've never tried lamb again, not even in a gyro or anything. Um, mm, I like gyro. Mm. Mm. So, I don't like the lamb either. So we're, I'm on uh, board with you, Jennifer. Uh, it, right, it's good. just red meat. You just have to season it right. Uh, okay, Jennifer, I, I love this story. And if this was a story of redemption, this person like learned a real life lesson by the end of this, it would be great. <laughs> that's where I was heading. So I was afraid I was going to offend people because if they read this just that much and that's all mm -hmm. I was able to write, that it, it comes off as like kind of racist and mm -hmm. we are the world is not the right aid. That was for people with aid, with for AIDS um, victims, right? Yeah. But yeah, I think it was world hungers. World yeah. hunger, yes. But it's a sprint, right? And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's so much wrong with this. But anyway, yes, that's it. So I hope no one's offended because, you no, know, the full there's not a camera. Well, I was offended yeah. by the jock straps. I have to I know. I was a little worried about that one, too, because it's like kind of gross. But, okay. but yeah, there's things, some things that actually, yeah. I do think lamb meat, the, at least what we had kind of smelled it. I don't know that I would say sweaty jock strap, but. <laughs> Close. Well, that's what happens in a sprint. Stuff just comes out, you yeah. know, and it just stays there. Mm. Right. Maybe that's what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're not edited pieces. So, I mean, I'm sure you might have maybe revisited that in editing and you may have chose to keep it or not. Right. Even as I'm typing, I knew we or the world was wrong. But I didn't have time to stop and research what it was. And so I'm like, oh, well, we'll just go with it. This person, <laughs> this person is a little wrong in a lot of things. So we'll just let it go. <laughs> it was better than my half a sentence of bumbling words trying to figure out what the title of some guy was. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, we all do that. The Secretary Ooh, of the Defense of the Queen. Back to see that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. All right, Jamie. You all come right, just yes. in time. I was able to find my piece. Here we go. This is from my Callahan Capers. Again, uh, in the in the current work in progress, uh, book one, um, Fargo and Moxie are just meeting each other, just getting to know one another. But these sprints, I'm writing as though uh, they're together. It just has been that way in the sprints. So here we go. Will that be <clears throat> will that be check or card? The stiff-lipped man behind the counter asked. Cash, if you don't mind. Fargo pulled out his wallet and slid several bills from it. He handed them in the direction of the clerk, who took them with two fingers. Moxie imagined the next thing the man would grab would be a bottle of hand sanitizer he kept just out of sight for such occasions. Moxie rolled her eyes and decided she would not let the stuffy attitude of the staff ruin her vacation. After all, it wasn't every day that a girl from Fremont, Michigan, flew to England. She turned her attention to the wall of windows that looked out on the topiary maze in front of the resort and the intricately shaped individual bushes that also decorated the expansive front lawn. She shivered as she remembered a book she'd read about such hedge animals coming to life and chasing people. Ready? Moxie jumped at the sound of Frank's voice. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you, he said. It's okay, my imagination just running away again. I had the bellman take our bags up. You want to freshen up before we hit the restaurant? Moxie shook her head. Actually, I'd rather eat first if it's all the same to you. Sounds good by me. I've been dying to try the bangers and mash here. They apparently do them up right to impress the tourists such as ourselves. Mr. Fargo, the sound of the shrill and snooty voice made Moxie's teeth clench. It couldn't be, yet it was. Mrs. Marilyn Hoffwipple, for whom Frank and Moxie had recovered a stolen poodle about a year ago, was descending the staircase, followed by her usual entourage of a spectacled girl carrying a stack of files and scribbling notes, and two well-muscled but also particularly well-dressed young men. Her security 
her secretary and her bodyguards, Moxie remembered, pressing her lips together to keep from smiling at the little secret she knew about one particular relationship amidst the trio. Mrs. Hoffwipple air kissed Frank on either side of his face and then clasped his hands. It's so nice to see you again, young man. And you remember Miss Callahan, I presume. Not Mrs. Fargo yet, Mrs. Hoffwipple said, quirking an eyebrow. Well, it's good to know you're still on the market then. Moxie felt her face grow red. I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong impression. Of course, you knew her as Miss Callahan, but indeed, I have had the pleasure of changing her last name. Frank dropped the matron's hands and slipped an arm around Moxie's waist. Oh, well then, that's altogether different, but this is cause for celebration. Be a lamb and allow me to treat you to a night on the town in this wonderful city, she said, puckering her lips and bowing her head to look up at Frank from beneath batting eyelashes, as though she were a child asking for a late bedtime. Moxie felt her face grow warm and wondered if this woman was ever going to stop blatantly ignoring her. <laughs> Yay. How many words is that? I'm just always amazed at you and Tina. 521. Wow. Golly, that's a lot. That Not only is it a lot, Jamie, but like the characters and the, the voice is so strong. Like, mm -hmm. I just love these characters. I'm so glad you're back in this world. Um, I cannot wait to read more of this. That was very yeah. entertaining. I kind of like Mrs. Hoffwipple. <laughs> Me <Yeah>. too. <laughs> Even though I don't like her. I did really you just create? Did you just create Hoffwipple like during the sprint? Is this the first you met her yourself? Um, that name. She. It, it is true that there is a poodle caper. That's book three. Um, awesome. but I don't know what her name is because I wrote it as a nano. Um, like I don't know, ten years ago or something. So right. I know that the person exists, but I don't know what her name is or if she even acts like that in the book. She does now. <laughs> She's about Maybe. to be edited into this person. Whatever she is right now. You had me at poodle caper. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. All right. All right. I didn't peg Moxie as a Fremont girl. Oh, well, okay. She is, the reason she's from Fremont is because, well, that's what happened in NaNoWriMo. And I happen to know a girl, Leanne, if you ever happen to see this episode, um, she is from Fremont, Michigan, where the Gerber Baby Food Factory is. And so that is subject to change because it was just a fact that I knew that came out in the Nano Sprint. But she is not a city girl. She comes to the big city to make her fortune. So she's from somewhere small. Um, it may remain Fremont. It may not. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. So um, oh. we have to now travel over to the accountability corner. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Which is everybody's favorite part of the podcast, I am sure. Um, so it, we want to keep each other accountable to. Um, oh, so if anybody wants to see if there's anything going on in the chat, how I got kicked off the last time was simply clicking my mouse. I just push the button on my mouse to scroll up and down in the chat window. So I cannot check what the chat is saying. So oh. you all have to keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, I think there's she, nothing right now. Yeah, I think Maria said that she has posted um, a link to her sprint. That's the last yes. thing that I was able to see. On, on yes. Twitter, she said, yep. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So in the accountability corner, um, I don't even know what to say. So I'll go first. Because so <laughs> we have decided that for numerous reasons, uh, a big one is that we have yet to figure out how to handle our incorporating and tax identification and structure of payment for a multiple author published book. We are kind of moving our Christmas compilation to possibly Christmas of next year, 2021. One, 2020, no, 2020 because we can't seem to figure that part out and we were having a little bit of trouble um just meeting our deadlines and things like that so with that being moved my goal kind of went out the window because my goal was to get that story finished up and um so that didn't happen um but i have made progress it's been really great to be more consistent with the office hours it's great to be kind of back in the saddle and recommitted I've been working a lot on my book, one of the Callahan Capers, and my goal for Thursday is to have my first chapter, my beginning, completely figured out because I've been wrestling with it and I just have to sit down and make some hard choices and get it done. Um, also, I will commit to being to office hours every day. 
So um, what do you say, uh, Tina, what are you, what are you going to set as a goal for next Thursday? Well, this is what I'm wrestling with. <laughs> right. Now. Oh, wow. That's uh, single sided, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I am um, I ran out of paper. Mm -hmm. And I had to use paper that had stuff on one side already. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I wanted pl somewhere to be able to write notes and stuff. So I have um, I'm about halfway through here. You can see all my little maybe you can't. I don't know where the camera is. I just this for me. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm about halfway through here and it's um it's starting to make the dentist seem a lot less scary. <laughs> 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 um, so oh, yeah. Tina, I feel you. I totally feel you. This is People are always like, oh, it's so hard to write a book. Okay, yes, it is. But wait till you start editing a book. And it like it feels like it's never ending. But let me tell you, the the crest of the hill is coming up. And someday you will be sitting in this chair like I am, but your chair, but you know what I mean? And you'll have been yeah, published it. and it'll make yeah. it so worth it. But we're here for you. We're gonna get you get you over that. I uh, I just posted a meme yes last night. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was what people think authors do and it had like a straight road through like the country that just kept going <laughs> and it said what authors really do and it had like i don't know what city it was but it was like just a mess of freeways like curling in and other around and over and under each other and you couldn't even tell where the roads were going i was like yep that's it right there that's where i am yeah so i'm just gonna have to keep plugging away every day um until it's done mm. All so right. Jamie seems to be frozen. Do we lose her? Oh, gosh, oh no. we not. All right. No, well, while we're frozen. while we're figuring that out, I will go ahead with my accountability. Before I do, um, we hear a ding. That's probably Jamie saying I'm frozen. Um, so my computer is running kind of slow too. Um, let's share real quick. Uh, Maria has shared in the in our chat that she has um, just won camp yesterday. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Congratulations. That definitely needs a little applause there. Congratulations. 52,700 words. That is awesome. And for her accountability, she is going to get back to doing the first round of edits on her third historical fiction novel. So she's with you, Jane, Tina. She's with you with the editing. And I... Well, that kind of flows right into mine because we have given up or, or we've set aside our um, um, we set aside this Christmas compilation. I can get back to book three as well. And uh, this is going to be the most painful editing I think of my life. So I just got to get through it. Um, I reread some stuff. I'm like ready to honestly, again, just kind of hack away at some things um, that I thought I needed to keep before. So uh, that's where I'm going to, so my accountability is I'm going to be, I would love to say that I'm going to be in office hours every day, but with my aunt, um, that probably isn't going to happen. So my accountability is that if I'm not in office hours, that I'm going to set aside somewhere in my day, two hours to be editing on book three. So, okay, Hi. Jamie, what about you? Um, I did mine first. So did Rhonda go while I disappeared? Oh, or not? Sorry. No, you did. Did. Yes. yes, I did. Yes, I'm no, done. No, no. Oh, you, we need to pray for Rhonda. Seven <laughs> lies. <laughs> okay, so now that the Christmas compilation is off the table for a while, um, I thought about just continuing with that and going ahead and publishing that. But I mean, if I'm that far ahead of you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that going and just have that ready for when you guys are ready to do it next year. So. Um, I am getting back to my Z story and I was talking to Jamie the other day and she had some really great um, thoughts on that. So I think I'm going to um, follow through on at least one of those suggestions. And I would like to get this wrapped up super quick. Uh, let's see, it's August. I was hoping to have it published in April. So I don't know. I'm going to miss that deadline. Let's say... I really can't give you a deadline right now because I've got to go back through it and see where I was a month ago and all that. So, so what about for next Thursday? Uh, there's like, so 
So how about the goal is by next Thursday to have a goal and to have it yeah. kind of timelined out, just like we did yeah. way, way once upon a time where we all said, well, if I want to publish by whatever day, then that means that I have to have it mm-hmm. ready to go to publish or by this day. So then you can yeah. know what your goal has to be as far as like, well, I'm going to have the first two chapters edited by next week or whatever. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, next week I'm going to be in North Carolina. So I am going to tell you that by next Thursday, I'm going to have it not outlined because I've got most of the everything written. I think I just need to pare it back. So I'm going to have, I don't know if I can say I can have the rough draft done, but I can, okay, let me just tell you, I'm going to have the revamped outline so I know what scenes are going to be in the book so I can know where to start editing. How's that sound? All right. Sounds good to me. I see that Maria Johnson, she won Camp Nano yesterday. Yeah, we already went over that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I miss everything. (laughs) Well, I appreciate everybody putting up with all my weird tech issues. Hopefully by the next podcast, we'll have that all sorted out also. And hopefully we'll have YouTube all sorted out as well. Not, um, I think I know, I think it was my fault, but we'll have to figure that out when, when I can actually get off of here and, and look at huh. that. So. All right. Okay. So well, good um, us that since, since they've taken away Hangouts, this is going to be a whole new ball game for us. So please bear with us and we apologize. Yeah. For- yeah. So it, your patience is super duper appreciated and we always appreciate your support. We love to read the sprints that you guys come up with. So um, keep sending those and spread the word about the Christian Indie Writers podcast. Um, and don't forget our live stream is moving to Friday, Friday, starting next week. So don't come looking for us on Thursday. You'll be sad. Come on Friday, 10 o'clock. Um, and uh, I think that's about it, unless any of you all have something to add about Facebook platforms or anything that we talked about today. All right. No. Well, in that case, this concludes the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next time, may your pen be prolific, may your deadlines be met, and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye. Bye. Bye.